I'm not gonna lie, the first shot that you just saw, it wasn't actually shot handheld and then stabilized in post. It was actually shot on a gimbal. And the whole point I wanted to make is, when do I need to bring a gimbal? Do I need to break my back to carry a heavy gimbal all the time? Or can I just kind of run and gun and handheld most of the time? And this is why I decided to make this video because I have this enigma all the time in my head. Do I bring a gimbal? Do I bring a tripod? Can I just hold the camera? Do I need to bring a gimbal? Do I need a tripod? So I thought I make this video especially focused on the FX6 and the cinema camera from Sony because I want to show you guys that not all the time you do actually need a gimbal. But when you do need a gimbal, make sure you have a good one. So let's get right into the video. The FX6 is pretty well known to be an amazing all-rounder documentary run and gun cinema camera, but there is one problem. IBIS is pretty much inexistent in this beautiful camera, which makes the whole shooting and post-production process a bit lengthy and a bit annoying. If you're shooting with any kind of glass, like a like a Sigma 2470 or any Sony glass or any pretty much out of focus glass, you can simply take the clips, drag it and drop it into Catalyst Browse and then stabilize it that way and it works like magic. But what happens when you shoot with cinema glass, like I do all the time, or vintage glass, like I do all the time? Well, it's a bit more complicated because it's just really not stabilized. And although most of the time you're able to add a warp stabilizer or a stabilizer in post and make it work that way, sometimes that just doesn't work. So what's the solution when you're shooting with a Sony FX6? You want to shoot handheld, your vintage or cinema glass, and you want to stabilize it so you don't have those weird micro jitters and warp stabilizer doesn't work in post. The solution is gyroflow. But first, let me get into Catalyst Browse because that part of the thing is the easiest part of the whole video. Catalyst Browse is a software for free from Sony. They just download, you open your files, and you can use it for many things, but I just use it for stabilization. For stabilization, all you gotta do is take a clip that you shot on a Sony FX6 or any pretty much Sony camera with any autofocus lens. You open the folder on Catalyst Browse, you take the file, you right click, and you click on stabilize. Now, just like that, it's stabilized and you can export it in whatever format you want. Usually the format that I use is upper ProRes cause it just doesn't lose any quality. So it is a bit of a workaround, but it's definitely the best way to do it, to be honest, if you're shooting on, especially on FX6. But to me, is the best way to do it, especially if you're shooting on FX6 or maybe on a Sony A7S III and you just simply want to remove some extra micro jitters. And it doesn't matter what kind of stabilization you have on, active, standard, whatever it is, with any of these cameras, the gyro data is there and you can stabilize it. When we're talking about Gyroflow, it's a bit more complicated. It is an open source software, which means that it's not as perfect as Catalyst Browse, it's not as intuitive, but it allows you to do so much more because whenever you shoot with a cinema or vintage glass, the camera still records gyro data. FX6, A7S3, FX3, FX30, whatever it is, the gyro data is still there, but Catalyst Browse is not able to see it because the lens is not connected, so it doesn't recognize the lens. But Gyroflow being an open source software, you're able to simply just see the data and then select the lens profile or create a new one, and then you're able to stabilize it the same way. Now, bear in mind that you have to very much be careful with the shutter speed they use, especially on Gyroflow. On Catalyst Browser, you can kind of you know, get away with it. But on Gyroflow, if you use 180 degree shutter speed, you will get a few wobbly here and there. So I totally recommend if you're doing a very stable shot, you want to keep it stable and you don't really want to bring a gimbal or whatever, but you want this one specific, very stable shot. Shoot it maybe like a 70 or 80 or 90 degree shutter. So that way you don't have as much motion blur and Gyroflow, whenever you try and stabilize it, it will look so much better. You don't get any weird artifacts. All you're gonna do for Gyroflow is simply drag, drop, select your lens profile and export the in and out that you want. Simple as that. Which brings us to the last point of this video. Do we need a gimbal? Well, 
I think that gimbal has a place and time. And I usually like to carry a gimbal with me almost all the time because I want to specifically have some specific shots at some point. The reality is that a lot of the time I actually really enjoy shooting handheld mostly because of the way things look and that is why I'm going to upgrade to hopefully an FX6 Mark II or FX3 Mark II soon whenever they come out because I want that better handheld look and feeling that only cinema camera can give you. With that said, even when you have a cinema camera like an FX6, you do want to be able of getting perfectly smooth footage and so especially with such an heavy camera and setup you need to have a good gimbal and this is not sponsored but I've been working with Zion throughout my whole career as a filmmaker now I think I made the first video with them maybe six years ago with one of the first Zion gimbal that came out that blew my mind and now with the Zion Crane 4 that was released a few months ago I honestly didn't think this would be possible, but I put the FX6 with the IRX 45mm on top and it worked like magic. Like the stabilization on this thing with such a heavy setup, it was impeccable. So yeah, if you do you want to use a gimbal with such cinema cameras, make sure that you have a good strong gimbal to support all of your camera and lenses and whatever you need with it. So Catalyst Browse, Gyroflow and Gimbal all have their space, time, place, everything. You just have to make sure that you know how to use each of them and when to use each of them to make the best out of it. So that's all for this one guys. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!